Dennis Gebhardt here. Happy New Year. I hope you all had a great holiday season and here we are into the first week of 2016 and uh, I'm sure you're excited as we are about business and about the, what the future holds. I want to take a few minutes today to talk about another what I call truth versus tales uh, and share a few minutes with you uh, on some understanding about some of the componentry that's involved in hair color. I don't know about you, but sometimes I read on Facebook and uh, all of these groups that I have a great honor of being part of. Uh, some of the questions that I see posed on those really frighten me because my consensus is that there is a lot of our colleagues out there in this industry that are still confused about hair color and how it works. And what really sometimes surpasses the questions that they ask are the experts who give them advice. And so this really concerns me. My mentor was an amazing person, and one thing he told me is always understand how color works and you'll be able to master it. So hopefully today I'll be able to shine a little, a little, a little bit of light on something that we all really are very familiar with, but sometimes we don't understand how to implement it and maximize its effectiveness. Now, of course, what I'm talking about is peroxide. Peroxide is a simple name for it. It comes by many different names. Peroxide, developers, activators, white essence activating solution. It comes in variations of what we call volumes here in the United States or percentages if it's a global product. It's an amazing the way that manufacturers take and tell the story of peroxide and what it does and what it actually creates when you use it in a color process. Now what simply peroxide is nothing more than oxygen and water, the combination of two. The ratio of water to oxygen determines the strength of the product, very simply. So the more oxygen, the less water that's in the product, the higher the strength or the higher the volume. And so what I want to share with you today is some things of understanding how peroxide actually works, what its purposes are. Now, here's a secret that manufacturers don't tell you. You see, sometimes they tweak the formulation because today, with having all of the modifiers and humectants and stabilizers that are added into peroxide today, you can't measure volume. You can't use a hydrometer to measure it. And so now it has a range. Some manufacturers will create a developer or a peroxide and they will increase the amount of water versus the amount of oxygen. And they can still call it a 20 volume, but you're gonna find it's not as effective. It doesn't give you the same lift that you're looking for. Fine example of how this works is if you go to the supermarket and you buy 3% peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, <coughs> and you use the 3% hydrogen peroxide that you have in your salon. They're both 3%, they're both 10 volume, but one is much stronger than the other. If you don't believe me, next time you cut yourself, pour a, a little bit of a 10 volume from your dispensary on that wound, and I think you'll find that it's a little bit stronger than the hydrogen peroxide you buy at the department store. So anyway, that is what peroxide is. How does peroxide work in hair color? It really has only three purposes. First of all, it's a delivery system. It's helped to deliver the intermediary dyes into the hair strand, into the cuticle and the cortex, and help them bind together, a chemical process occurs, and a dye develops. Second thing it does is it fractures melanin or pigment that's in that hair strand. You see, it has to make a place for the artificial dyes that it's carrying in to lie. The third thing, of course, is it develops the dye molecules. So after that chemical process is complete, that's how color is created. Now here's the interesting thing about that, is during that entire process, there's also something else that occurs. And because of the presence of peroxide, it increases that situation, and here's what happens. During that chemical process, we are converting cysteine, which is protein, like your fingernails, your teeth, your bones, to cysteine. Cysteine is more of a gelatinous type of material, so much like your, your eyes, your eyeballs, things of that sort. So what happens in that chemical process is peroxide is literally fracturing and dissolving the melanin that's in the hair fiber. What that means to you is that the stronger the peroxide is, the more cysteine, cysteine is created, and that starts to weaken the structure of the hair. Actually, peroxide is actually much stronger than ammonia is. 
I'm going to give you an at-home experiment so you can try it yourself just to make sure that you believe what I'm saying. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Get yourself two bowls, buy yourself a bottle of regular household ammonia, and then take your 20 volume developer from the salon, take them home. Pour 20 volume in one bowl, pour your ammonia in the other bowl, take two fingers, stick one in each bowl, and hold them there until you can no longer hold them there because you will experience a little bit of pain. How many of you remember what it's like when you get peroxide on your fingertips when you're foiling hair? You see what happens is the skin starts to turn white. That's a process of peroxide breaking down cysteine and to cysteine. Once you can't hold, no longer hold your fingers in the bowl, pull them out. You'll find the one with ammonia may hurt, may burn, may even be a little bit of bleeding. But the one with peroxide, you can literally take your thumbnail and you can scrape off part of your flesh because that's what the peroxide has done to your skin. That's why when I watch YouTube and I see Facebook and I see some of the chemical processes that our salon professionals are doing in this industry on the hair with high volumes of peroxide and high levels of color or even bleach in spite of all the synthetic additives that you add, I'm concerned for the condition or the quality of that hair. So my question to you is, you know, understand how peroxide works. Understand what it does. Now, you know, there's some tales about peroxide that aren't exactly accurate either. Last episode, we talked about the color wheel. <laughs> this time I wanna talk a little bit about peroxide. First of all, first tale. Many people have been trained or taught to pre-soften hair with peroxide. Now, if you think about it, it is an acidic solution. At, and the purpose of pre-softening resistant hair is to swell the cuticle and make it more receptive to the color treatment. So if I'm using an acid like peroxide, especially an aggressive acid like peroxide, I'm not going to pre-soften the hair. What I am going to do is I'm going to punch holes in the cuticle layer. And when I try to describe a visual for a cuticle, I kind of think about going to the supermarket and where the meat department is. You know how the butcher walks through and you've got these plastic things hanging down off the doorway and you can kind of see through them but not really to me that's what the cuticle looks like because we say it's a translucent material and so what happens then is that peroxide flushes that oxygen in punches holes in that cuticle layer and starts to de decompose the structure of the hair which means that once that cuticle layer is removed off the hair strand that hair will not hold color in fact, that hair probably needs to be physically taken off the head because there's really no repairing that will help that. Uh, like a friend of mine says, unicorn blood and fairy dust only exist on ABCs once, in a life, once upon a time. So anyway, those are the things that we need to understand about peroxide. We don't use it to pre-soften. If we're going to pre-soften the hair, we're going to use an alkaline solution. Most often salon professionals use straight tent because it's alkaline straight from the tube of the bottle. That helps to swell that cuticle and make it more receptive. The second tale about peroxide is volume for lift. We've all been to education where they've taught us 10 volume for one level, 20 volume for two, 30 volume for three. Then we go back to the salon and we formulate up by 30 volume, we apply it to the head of hair and we don't achieve three levels of lift and we get very concerned. We go, what went wrong? Well, here's what went wrong. Remember that that's all an estimation because here's what science tells us. Peroxide can only release as much oxygen as the environment within it which it lives. Meaning that the more alkaline the environment is, the more oxygen peroxide will release. The more oxygen peroxide releases, the more pigment it fractures. The more pigment it fractures, the lighter the visual result. So lift is not just peroxide. Lift is peroxide in conjunction with the level of color that we're mixing it with. That's why I kind of, I'm surprised sometimes. I've read some of these resource materials, some of these groups that are actually supposedly experts who actually certify you as a colorist who say that if you mix a higher volume of developer with this level of tint, it'll give, it, give you a half a level of lift lighter, which is not accurate because the peroxide can't lift you. If you're mixing it with a seven, with 20 volume, you can't mix it with 30 and make it an eight. It's still gonna be a seven. But what you are gonna do is you're gonna create a very, very difficult to refine 
undertone because you're going to make a brighter result, not a lighter result. The third tale about peroxide I want to leave you with today is about peroxide converting to water. We know that's true, but there's no chemical process or color process where peroxide ever has the opportunity to totally convert to water. Because of the amount of processing time involved in a normal hair color, oxidation never really gets time to complete itself, with the exception of demi-permanent developers, which are very, very low as far as volume goes. So the good news about that is that if I test my color before I take it off the head, and I see that it's not as bright or red as I want, or it's an off tone, I can make a correction right there before I take the product off the head. That's where that extra amount of oxidation works out for you as a positive. How about the other side? How about high lift tents? Most manufacturers recommend their high lift tents process for 45 to 50 minutes total. But you know how we are. If 50 minutes is good, 60 minutes must be better. So we process it beyond the, the recommended processing time. And here's what happens. The peroxide is still releasing oxygen. It's still fracturing pigment. So that those intermediary dyes that you placed in there, the small amount that was in that high lift tent, they get eaten up. And what you end up with is a raw, unrefined lift. So understanding that oxidation is still going on after the chemical process has finished, after the recommended timing. It allows you to either use it as a, as a bonus or to measure it and say, look, I'm gonna make sure I get it off on the right amount of time. Those are the three things I wanted to share with you today about peroxide. You know, there's a multitude of stories about each and every one of the componentries of hair color. And it's no wonder that we are confused because when you go to a hair show, you walk into one manufacturer's program, they tell you one story, another manufacturer tells you another story. I even get confused when I walk out. The funny thing is they should all be talking about the same story when they talk about science, but they don't because it's about marketing. And that's why today in our industry, most salon professionals, what we consider science is really a marketing story. My goal this year is to dispel some of those stories so that you understand that it doesn't matter what product you use. You choose the product because of fragrance, because of the shade, whatever works for you, whatever makes you feel good. But the magic is in you. It's not in the product. A true hair color master knows each and every one of the products that they use and they know how to maximize them for the best effect. So I hopefully have helped you today with a few minutes of information on peroxide. I know it sounds like basic information, but you would be surprised how many people still pose questions about when do I use 20 volume, when do I use 30 volume. If this has been interesting for you and you find it beneficial, please share it with your friends. Let them know that we're broadcasting on a weekly basis. Uh, I would love to have you, if you have the opportunity, come to California. Spend a couple of days with us because here's what we know. You can watch YouTube, you can watch on Facebook, you can watch on the internet, learn all of these things, but nothing beats being with your coach and having hands-on experience. So hopefully uh, you might think about coming to California and spending a couple of days with us here at the Hair Color Guru Institute. If you wanna reach out and contact me, I'm gonna have a pan over there to the flip chart. We have all the different ways of contacting me on Facebook on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and of course our company's channel which is www.productions-unleash.com. Reach out and please send me some information. Let me know if this has been good for you and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love to uh, share with you on that channel as well. We're not only going to be doing Truth versus Tales episodes, but we're also going to be sharing some great techniques and some great approaches to helping you build your business. I thank you all so much for listening. Listen, have a fabulous day, and I'll see you soon.